the Mox return to Finley Stadium with head coach Tom Art leading the way. We got an opportunity to do something different. You got to do it better than you've ever done it before. You got to communicate better than you've ever communicated before. It's got to mean more to you than it's ever meant to you before. And he ends up touchdown. This opportunity, this moment, today, forward. Right, to give that type of effort every single day. Straight back to throw and sack. You got the opportunity to set the standard for what it means to play at Chattanooga. You're watching Inside Chattanooga Football, hosted by head coach Tom Arth and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Inside Chattanooga Football is presented by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca Cola bottler. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds. The Mox football team went to Birmingham last weekend and came away with a victory over one of the top 10 teams in the country. Chattanooga over the eighth-ranked Sanford Bulldogs. It was a late field goal by Victor Olmo that proved to be the difference. We'll have highlights of that Mox win over Sanford and also preview the Chattanooga upcoming game when the Mox travel to Spartanburg this Saturday to take on the Walford Terriers. Also, basketball season just a couple of weeks away. Earlier this week, the men's basketball team got to know some of their fans up close and personal. We'll take a look at that meet and greet from McKenzie Arena when Inside Chattanooga Football returns right after this. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. We are taking you inside the beautiful Sanford University campus here on the outskirts of Birmingham in Homewood, Alabama. You see the matchup for you, the Chattanooga Mox coming down I-59, taking on the ranked Sanford Bulldogs. These two teams in their Tradition have played over 40 times. Chattanooga leads the overall series, and especially the Mox have dominated since the SOCON was formed. Coming into this ball game, they've really been phenomenal with Devlin Hodges leading the way again. The SOCON offensive player of the week last week and All-American last season and is clearly on pace to be an All-American again this year. Chad, one of the matchups to watch for as Hodges immediately goes in the air, it is caught. Just short of the 50-yard line by Kelvin McKnight. Two to the right, second and 13, Devlin Hodges. Over the middle, he's got his man. McKnight running for the end zone, flies in like Superman and scores. Chattanooga milking the clock. Copeland over the middle, high, and caught by Young. Flag on the play, and I would not be surprised if there's pass interference anyways. Will Young on the reception. Mox trying to get some points on the board. That ball is tipped and then intercepted by Sanford, and there is the turnover. One yard for the first down, and it is a reverse, and then back to Hodges, and he is tackled. And the ball is on the ground, picked up by the Mox. Here's Copeland. Lifts it high in the air towards the end zone. It is caught. It is a touchdown. Joseph Parker. Let's watch that play again. Again, Copeland takes a little step to his right, throws in the back corner of the end zone, and what a great catch by Parker for the touchdown. So he's a guy who's had success in trying to build that here. Sanford trying to build upon that. Second down and five, McKnight with the video move, and McKnight high steps his way to the 48-yard line for a first down Sanford. One single setback, and there goes Moses Satine. He'd be available for a check down. That ball was tipped and then intercepted by Chattanooga. Reynolds with the ball. So the turnover battle right now belongs to Chattanooga. By the way, Omari Williams has not yet checked back in. We saw him get rolled up earlier. Bridges, fumble, and it's Sanford football. Jordan Weaver. 
seven for 10 this year with a long of 40. We've got a 48 yarder by Weaver. That's going to come up just short. Most likely is going in the air. Man in motion. And intercepted by Chattanooga for a pick six. Lucas Webb for the fourth time in his career that sets a SOCON record. Three minutes gone by, third quarter, Chattanooga. Not far from the red zone. Copeland under center, quick pitch. He's got Young who goes stiff arm. And then gets dragged out of bounds at around the 13. Second down and 10. Man in motion, rolling out Copeland. Copeland throws, he's got a man, it is caught, touchdown, Chattanooga! Alfonso Stewart. And Stewart did a great job that time of going down, catching the football and getting his hands under the ball. San Paulo, Brazil, home of Olmo, and he hits it off the upright. At this point in the ballgame. Big fullback for some protection. Copeland wants seven. That could be picked off, and it is. Sanford had a man there to the 20. And that was one of the few mistakes Copeland has made. This will be a fourth down and nine for Sanford. We'll see who steps up. Hodges, opposite way, back to one of his linemen, and that's not gonna go very far. And tackled at the 12. But that was snuffed out perfectly by Mahaffey. A pitch, Bridges. Fumble, ball's on the floor, and Sanford pointing as they've got it. We'll let the referees decide. This is obviously a huge call. It goes without saying, and Sanford has the football. Marion to his left, over center, trying to pull his way in. He gets a push from behind. From this angle, it looks like he's in, but we've got to wait for the referees. Two wide left. Three to the right. Marion, the big body on the right. Nothing really open at the moment, so it's Hodges. Gets one more block, now lets it fly. It is intercepted by Chattanooga. That is a huge play after Sanford had great field position. Again, Devlin Hodges trying to get the ball to Washington and just toe tapping on the sidelines is Trevor Wright. Chains have been moved. Hodges to the air. Got a man! It's caught! Touchdown, Dogs! Schelling! Just this quick strike offense again. We'll see Schelling going out to the corner, making the grab, diving into the end zone, coming into your living room for this Sanford defense. Darius Harvey to receive the punt. High, but not very deep. I don't think, I, he might have touched it. Did Harvey touch it? Chattanooga's pointing. The referees have yet to point. And they will! Chattanooga off the fingertips of Harvey. Uh, Chattanooga's going to go four down lineman set here as Sanford's staying on the ground. Adams on second down, the ball is on the ground. And after the scrum, the ball actually moved a few yards forward, and I think Sanford has it. Turnover, and the mocks say they have it. But they're going to bring the kicker out now and try to win this ball game, or at least take the lead in this ball game here. Marked at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. 44 the long for Olmo. Snap the placement, the boots. It is up, and it is good. Chattanooga out in front by two. Hodges with five wideouts, three rushing, short pass, Washington. Washington's gonna need help on the lateral. Back it goes to Hodges. Hodges flips it behind him. That ball is still alive. Chattanooga has it, and it will be the Mox pulling off the upset.
garnering all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. Last night, we invited our fans and Mox Club members and season ticket holders down to uh, meet the team uh, with the new head, uh, head coach, uh, Lamont Paris, new coaching staff, uh, a lot of new faces on the team, new court, new, new uniforms. It was just an opportunity for our fans to, to you know, get their first look at our 2017-18 uh, men's basketball team. So basically the format was we invited our season ticket holders uh, for the 2017-18 season to come down and they got to have their own exclusive dinner um, down in the hospitality room and they got the opportunity to uh, talk with coach and uh, our new director, our vice chancellor and director of athletics, Mark Wharton. And after that, uh, we kind of had stations here on the court. Uh, we had photo opportunities on the Power C with players. We had free throws going on. We had a dribbling station. We had bounce houses with players at. Turnout was great. Uh, our fans came out like they always do. We uh, love our fans and love the support that we get from them. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, got lots of good feedback from the players and the staff um, and even, even the fans that came that they, were, that they were excited about how many fans were getting excited about basketball season. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Allegra. 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds with Moxhead football coach Tom Arth. And first and foremost, regardless of how good or sloppy or pretty or anything else, a win had to feel good. Uh, it felt great. It was really, uh, it was really a special moment. Um, you know, those last few seconds as the clock was ticking off and uh, going into the locker room, you know, with our team and, and feeling their excitement and their joy and, you know, all the hard work and all the sacrifice that they made, um, you know, throughout this season, you know, really, you know, you felt that pay off. I've said before, as a parent, your favorite moments are your kids happy. I would think as a coach, your favorite moment has to see your players celebrating. No, there's no doubt. And, you know, I, I kind of try to stay out on the field and see everybody as they were going in. And then I got into the locker room. I was probably one of the last ones in. And, you know, they're singing and dancing and, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. So it was just, you know, again, it's just it's why you it's why you love this game. It's why you make all the sacrifices that you make throughout the week and uh, throughout the off season and the summertime and, you know, all of those things that you do for for moments like that. And I said before, I was the one that wanted Coach Art to get the Powerade bath at VMI. He did get one in Birmingham, and I said uh, at the time, I hope it was as cold and sticky as I thought it would be, or hoped it would be. It, you know, it felt <laughs> it felt great. You know, I, I wasn't feeling much at that point, and um, you know, it wasn't until uh, until you know probably after we finished talking after the game, I was like, man, like, getting <laughs> That's a little uncomfortable. bit sticky and uncomfortable here. So. We had talked about turnovers or lack thereof for a long time, several weeks in a row, unfortunately, and you guys turned that around for better or for worse, got some turnovers, forced some, created some things, right? We did. Um, you know, I think our defense uh, did, a, did an excellent job um, really affecting the quarterback early in the game. Our defensive line, you know, although you look at the stat sheet and you're not going to see a bunch of sacks, um, but they pushed the pocket so well and they really collapsed it and, and made it very difficult for the quarterback, one, to see, two, to, to really get into any kind of rhythm them and feel comfortable and our, our secondary was able to make plays. Talk about Tay Davis and Taylor Reynolds and Lucas Webb with a pick six and uh, he's a record holder now. When the ball got in his hands you knew he was going to make the end zone didn't you? Yeah absolutely. Um, you know it was a great job recognizing the formation they were in and knowing that it was either going to be screen or um, you know the, the sucker play off of the screen and Lucas dropped right to, to where you know he knew the ball was coming and quarterback threw it right to him and you know was able to finish it in the end zone like he has mm -hmm. typically done. 
Taylor Reynolds was really happy for him, um, you know, being at home, uh, you know, having an opportunity to play in front of, I think, at least 40 members of his family and, you know, coming up with the big uh, the fumble recovery and the interception, um, two incredibly big plays in the game for us. And he, you know, outside of those plays, you just watch him and the effort that he played with every play. And again, stat line won't show it, but, you know, just had such an incredible, you know, impact on, on that game. When you went from playing the Citadel to Sanford, we said, "Whoa, what a, what, a, what a big change. Now you go from Sanford to Wofford. Wofford with the inside track to the league championship right now. So you know they'll be playing for an awful lot on Saturday. Uh, they will be, and they're, they're a great team, uh, incredibly well-coached uh, football team, and a very tough, very physical team. So we'll have our work cut out for us, and we know it's going to be a hard-fought game, and uh, we're, excited. we're excited to get back out there. Mox Interior Saturday in Spartanburg. We'll have highlights of that game next time on Inside Chattanooga Football. Inside Chattanooga Football has been brought to you by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca Cola bottler.